In this video, I'm going over my journey so far with the thumb release. So to kind of preface this video, this is the release that I've used probably since I was 14 years old. Uh, this is just a Scott Little Bitty Goose. To be honest, I don't even know if they still make this release. But what I liked about it was that it had a buckle instead of like a Velcro attachment. Uh, I could adjust the length however I needed it. And as you can see, I pretty much covered the entire, every metal surface with style strips to keep that thing quiet, just to make sure I wasn't gonna bang it on anything. And at some point, I can't remember exactly when, I had bought a Silverback, which is a tension activator release. It's got a safety on it. You get to full draw, take your thumb off the safety, and then you just basically expand until that release fires off of a certain amount of tension. And the idea behind that is to make sure that you're actually using the proper muscles to fire your bow versus just punching the trigger, which is a common ailment that a lot of people can have with an index or a wrist rocket style of release, whether or not they even know that they're doing it. It, it can be a cause of target panic for some people. I never really got it that bad. Um, and even early on in my archery career, I kind of had the exposure to at least know how you were supposed to fire a wrist release like this. You wanna have that trigger set fairly short so that you can wrap your finger around it and create a little bit of tension buildup as you wrap that finger around. And then you essentially start pulling back in that motion causes your hand to relax a little bit, which pulls basically the trigger into your finger and causes it to go off. So that's how you're, you know, quote unquote, supposed to fire one of these kind of releases. Some people will transition to a release like this in kind of combination with also using a thumb trigger release. So this spring, ever since ATA, I brought this release back from ATA. It's a, a hot shot X-Spot Deuce, which is a two finger release. And I really just wanted to try it and see if, you know, it would improve my accuracy, if there was any kind of advantages from a hunting perspective. So I'll kind of go, go over what I uh, learned from shooting this release all summer, thousands of shots, and then kind of give my thoughts so far on what I think the pros and cons would be from the perspective of a whitetail hunter in a tree stand. The first thing that I guess I want to talk about is shot execution methods. And with a thumb release, there's really a couple different methods. One of the methods would be you clip your release on the string, you get back to full draw, and essentially what you do when you get to anchor is, well, what you're not supposed to do is the same thing you're not supposed to do with an index finger trigger, which is to just smash that trigger with your thumb. That would be usually indicative that you have some kind of a target panic problem and could lead to major accuracy or mental breakdown issues down the road. Uh, what you're supposed to do, according to some train of thoughts, is basically get this thumb trigger set in a position that when you're at full draw, you can kind of place your thumb on that trigger and create some preload, a little bit of tension there. And then as you just kind of pull and expand back with your back muscles, that kind of pulls your, basically pulls your thumb into the trigger, which causes it to fire. Now, the other school of thought, and there's, you know, from what I could see, a bunch of different minor variations on this, but the other school of thought is you basically get back to that anchor position, you kind of load your thumb on that trigger, and then you relax your hand. And as you relax the muscles in your hand, it again allows that release to slip forward a little bit, which pulls the trigger into your thumb, causing the release to fire as a surprise release. And so I played around a little bit with both of these. One of the things that I found out over time is that with the method of execution where you essentially just load some tension on that thumb trigger and then just kind of pull back the same as you would do with a tension style release. One of the issues that I would occasionally run into is that with a bow like mine, which has limb stops, really solid limb stops, when I get to full draw and I hit that back wall, it's solid, it's not moving. So what can happen sometimes is basically if I didn't have enough tension loaded on that trigger before I started to execute my shot, the tension against that back wall would just build and build and build and the release wouldn't fire. So it'd be like, keep pulling, 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 nothing happens. And eventually it gets to the point where the pin, instead of just having a nice tight little float, starts going all over the place. My arm starts shaking because I'm trying to get that release to fire. And that would just be indicating to me that, you know, I didn't have enough preload so that when I started to pull back, basically there wasn't enough uh, movement there to be able to pull that trigger into my thumb and there was no additional movement that I could basically continue to use and the only way to get that trigger to fire at that point would either be to let down start over or relax the hand 
or uh, engage the thumb to actually get that release to fire. And the other methods that I tried, you know, in regards to the relaxation, um, where you allow that hand to relax, or I've also seen it where you just allow that middle finger to relax, uh, which essentially allows the pressure to build on the middle finger and the thumb at the same time. That, that's probably the method that for me, when I get to full draw against those solid limb stops, allows me to have the most solid pin float and still get that surprise release. The challenge that I found that you can sometimes run into with that style of release is that if you start to relax your hand and you're just kind of sitting relaxed against that back wall, and sometimes when you start to relax your hand even further, you start to almost lift off the back wall if you're not really also focused on maintaining that tension against the wall. And so sometimes you'd lift off the back wall a little bit and then the release would fire and sometimes that would throw your shot off. I think for me, what I kind of found is a good happy medium, what seems to be working, is almost like a combination where essentially I'm getting to full draw and I'm engaging those back muscles. And while I'm engaging those back muscles, I start to work on just allowing that hand to relax. And then that release breaks. And these thumb trigger releases are, are built on a sear system. So you got two little pieces of metal and eventually they get you know, closer and closer and they just, they just break. There's not any travel in these. It's not like you get any movement while you uh, cause that trigger to pull. You just build tension. And once that tension hits a certain amount on that trigger, it fires. Now, pros and cons, what I guess a lot of people are gonna be you know, most interested to learn about in this particular video. In terms of accuracy, you know, for me, when I'm on with this release, I'm on and I can shoot really well. And the same is true with this release. I would say it's more easy for me to fall into the trap of doing a little bit of target anticipation with this release where I might have little bouts where I can tell I'm starting to punch the trigger and I'm starting to, you know, hold off, get locked off the target and then raise it up and then fire the release, which is minor target panic. And once I, once I kind of realize that I'm doing that, then I'll go back to a release like this and just work on executioning after a few shots of shooting like I'm supposed to, go back to a release like this. It's a little bit harder for me to fall into that same trap using this style of release. So if you're someone who's prone to getting target panic, I definitely think that it still pays regardless of what you do to figure out how to fix it the right way through shot executions and, and mantras through your head and making sure that you're doing the right things to make that shot go off uh, from the mental side of things instead of just relying on the equipment to solve the problem for you. I don't think that's the right way to go. If you have target anticipation issues though, in addition to fixing the mental side of things, this piece of equipment I think might make it a little bit easier for you to maintain that transition and continue to do things the right way. In the woods, pros versus cons. I guess I'll go over the pros first as I kind of see them with the thumb style release and then go over the cons. So pro number one, when this bow is sitting up on the hanger, I can just go ahead, attach the release to the D-loop, and then just let it sit there. So then I can do whatever I want with my hands. I can have them in pockets, making sure they stay warm. As soon as that deer comes in, pick up the bow, grab the release, and I'm ready to draw back. There's no monkeying around or fiddling around with trying to get the caliper of this release to hook onto that D-loop. I don't have to look down quite as much. I can keep my focus more on the animal, more on the situation. So I think that's a, definitely a huge positive, especially if you're the type of guy who films your hunts. Because oftentimes when I would have an index finger release, I'd hook onto the release with that caliper and then I'd have to move the camera. So I'd have to detach the release, move the camera arm, hook back up. So there's a lot of time spent actually looking away from the animal. And sometimes I get caught where I go to do a movement, look back up and the deer's got me pegged. So being able to minimize the amount of time that you have to have your eyes away from the deer when it's coming in, I think is a big advantage. Advantage number two, if you are the type of person who's not only going to essentially get a thumb release, but kind of go all in, so to speak, and get a tension activator release too, you can get tension activator releases and thumb releases that are very, very similar in feel. So you can flip flop back and forth between one versus the other out at the range, and it's gonna be a very easy transition, more so than trying to get a tension activator release and switching back and forth with an index style release. Now, I did do that for obviously uh, quite a while, 
And the way that I did it was I set up my anchor point for the handheld release. So I would set that up so basically my, these two knuckles would be kind of riding on my jaw and I would kind of videotape myself to make sure that my knock was in the right location, uh, both kind of vertically and in between my lip and my chin and just made sure that it was solid that way. And then when I went back to the index finger release, I would just make sure that all those anchors were in the exact same spot, meaning knock was in the right place, the string was touching the corner of my lip, my nose, the tip of it was on the string, the peep housing was aligned with the sight housing. And between all those various anchors, it didn't quite matter as much for me exactly where my hand was. I was still able to get the same point of impact and very repeatable shots switching back and forth. But what I tried with my wife when she got her bow set up this summer was I had her start off with just this tension activated release. And that's all she shot with for probably the first maybe month that she ever even owned her bow. And then eventually we said, okay, we're getting ready for hunting season. I want you to be able to learn to use a trigger style release. And, and she already knew about the dangers of anticipation and all that. We've, we talked about that kind of thing. I bought her a caliper release thinking she might be able to do the same kind of transition that I could between this release and this release. Not at all. She hated the wrist style release after being, after having shot with a handheld style release. So what we essentially did is went ahead, returned that caliper release and she ordered another one of those uh, trigger, her thumb trigger releases. This one's the uh, hot shot X spot, but it's the three finger version versus the two finger that I had. Exact same release, just this one has one additional uh, finger spot essentially. For her, the first day out the range, I got video clips, the, you know, probably the first or second actual set of shots that she took at the targets, she was right on. It was a really easy transition for her to make going from the tension activated release to basically going through the shot activation cycle of preloading that trigger and doing the same exact motion to get that thing to fire with a surprise release. So for her, that was a big advantage using a thumb style versus trying to use a caliper style. Advantage number three, harder to punch the trigger. Uh, potentially, again, I think it depends more on the person focusing on the proper shot execution rather than necessarily the equipment to get you there. But it probably is, I would say, harder to punch this than it is to punch this, but you could do it with either. Advantage number four, like I kind of alluded to earlier, the anchor point for me is a little bit more solid with a handheld style release than it was with the wrist style release. With this wrist style release, if I had everything up here with the string, my two string anchors and my peep housing and sight housing alignment, if I had all those things on, oftentimes my knuckle would end up about by my earlobe, but it wouldn't necessarily be super solid. As long as the other stuff was in line, it was usually fine. But with this style of release, the handheld, I had that additional feeling of being able to get kind of bone on bone with my first two fingers in my jaw. I have all the same string anchors that I did with the wrist strap style release, but I have the additional kind of bone on bone with my hand and my jaw. So now let's talk about the downsides or the cons. The first con is that it could be potentially easier to lose, right? This thing, you're probably gonna be keeping it in a pocket, whether it's a jacket pocket or a pack pocket, and there's the potential that you have it in the wrong jacket. Maybe you leave your jacket in the truck, you use the different pack and you forgot that you left the release in the old pack. Something along those lines, right? It, it could happen. Whereas with a wrist strap style release, typically that's like one of the boxes that you check when you leave the truck, right? Okay, I got my pack, got my bow, got my release, got it, all right, we're good. Potential downside number two is that you could knock this thing off if you're not careful, right? You're, you're moving around, you're doing something silly. If you're at a, a target range, that could damage the release if you drop it on like concrete or something like that. If you're in the woods, maybe you ding it off your tree stand and then it falls an additional 20 feet, right? So that's just something you kinda gotta be careful of. It's not a showstopper by any means, but you gotta be careful more so than with a wrist strap style release. Number three, one of the disadvantages I feel like, and it kind of goes in line with exactly what style you have in terms of the number of fingers, but when you're drawing this thing back, you're drawing your bow back with your back muscles, shoulder muscles, arm muscles, right? The weakest link in the chain becomes your fingers because typically if you are gonna get cold in a tree, 
it's usually your fingers that go first, your fingers and toes, right? That's not, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. And with a wrist strap style release, I'm not, I'm not ever gonna leave if I get numb. I'm just gonna tough it out and make sure I dress warmer the next time. But if my fingers are numb, I'm basically pulling back with my fingers not as part of the equation, right? These things can be totally non-functional. I can still get that bow drawn back. And then it's just a matter of executing the release. Whereas if my fingers, the weakest point here, my fingers are numb, this thing's pretty easy to draw at the range in the summer. Is it gonna be as easy in December? I don't know. But that's something I'm obviously gonna figure out this fall. And that's something I feel like a three finger might give you a little bit more advantage or even a four finger. There are potential downsides, depending on who you talk to, to uh, releases that have too many fingers and that you can do more manipulation with them. I think that could probably be a trade-off that could be balanced with making it a little bit easier to get back to full draw. Potential downside number four would just be noise. In this particular release, to be able to get it to activate and clip on the string, there is one button on the back side here that you press. Real quiet little click like that, not terribly loud, but it's definitely audible. And then to close the, the caliper, there's one additional light click. Now that's something, right, if you're really worried about it, you can do it in your pocket or wherever, you can muffle it. So I don't think a deer is gonna notice. You can be set up 50 yards from a bed. They're not gonna notice that small amount of noise as long as you aren't just super blatant about it, right? The actual trigger release is a little bit louder. That's probably the loudest part of the entire release is actually when you cause that sear to go off. I videotaped myself shooting my bow and try to pick out various noises. I've done some sound tests and you can never hear this thing distinctly different from the actual sound that the bow makes. The bow going off is so much louder, especially when you're out at like 20, 30 yards and you got the camera pointed back at where you're shooting from. I honestly don't think it's gonna make a bit of difference having that additional noise on top of what your bow is already producing because the bow is more extreme of a sound. So that's just kind of my two cents on it. Would it hurt if it was quieter? No, but I don't necessarily know that it's the biggest thing in the world. And the last downside is that these typically cost considerably more than a wrist strap index finger style of release. These releases you can find from you know, the $20 versions at Walmart, or maybe even cheaper than that on Amazon for some of the, the cheap Chinese ones, all the way up to you know, around 100 bucks or so for some of the nicer caliper style releases. Whereas with the thumb style of trigger, depending on who you go with, the good ones typically are like the $150 to $300 range. These two releases, when Sam bought hers off of Amazon, it was $168 on Amazon Prime. It seems like there's a lot of them kind of right around that $200 mark. And I believe this one is pretty much the same price point as this. I think Lancaster sells them for $178. So they're in that kind of you know $170 to $180 price range, which is obviously considerably more than this style of release. So then ultimately it's gonna come down to weighing the pros versus the cons. For me, the accuracy potential, the solid anchor, being able to switch back and forth between the tension and the thumb style, uh, those are all big advantages. And probably the biggest advantage for me is being able to clip that thing onto the D loop as soon as I get set up in the tree. That's a huge advantage from my perspective, especially the, given the fact that I'm always typically trying to film my hunts. So I'm gonna give this thing a good try. Uh, additionally, throughout the season, what I may also do is just put some stealth strips over this thing just to uh, make sure that if I do bump it against something accidentally, it's not gonna make a big noise like that. But that's probably the only modification that I'll really make to it. And uh, I, think it, I think it's gonna perform just fine. So that'll wrap it up for this video. I uh, hope you guys found it helpful. And I know there's definitely some guys out there that have probably made the same transition before I have and probably have some thoughts either way as well. Uh, so if you guys have had positive experiences with thumb releases for hunting, or if you've had negative ones, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to read your experiences as well. And with that, thanks for watching.